What's going on? I'm Larry Hoover Jr. and I'm rocking with Street Certified News. What up, this your boy Bum J. We rocking with Street Certified News. Peace out, great. Yeah, Street Certified News, man. Street certified Shout out Big Bo. Shout out Walker. Street Certified, man. Yo, yo, yo. It's your boy Mixel Guapo, man. Street Certified News. And we back with another one. And this week, man, uh, you know what I'm saying? We wanted to jump into something new, man, a new story. I know it's a lot of updates coming, you know, with the FBG Dub Marty Case, the O Block 5 Rico. Uh, and, 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 you know, if something pop up that's, you know, important, we'll jump back to it. But, man, this week, man, I wanted to jump into a, a story that I have been working on actually even before, you know, the O Block Rico and all of that stuff, uh, before those documents had came out in August. Um, this week's story, man. We're going to talk about, man, Chicago's most deadliest gang, the hobos, man. Man, let's get right into it. In early 2003, Chicago was a place devoid of leadership in the streets. The GDs and BDs and a number of other gangs in the city were rebuilding after the extreme violence of the late 70s and the 1980s. While in the 1990s, the federal government had toppled the leaders for most of the major gangs in the city. Following these events, a number of lifelong members from all factions will become disillusioned with the future outlook. The new leadership was not as respected as their predecessors, and soon top enforcers and drug connects for mostly the GDs and the BDs will unite, creating the first of its kind, a renegade super gang. This is the story of the Chicago gang that at one point in the 2000s ruled all other gangs. They took over blocks and eliminated anyone who stood in their way. The earth was their turf. This is the story of Chicago's deadliest gang, the hobos. You know what I'm saying? We've been working on this video actually for a while. Um, this is only part one. It's a lot more information, you know what I'm saying, that we want to share with y'all. But I definitely wanted to like lay the groundwork of like who the hobos are, where they come from, and you know, just kind of like the general part of the story. And then, you know, in part two, man, we gonna dig a little deeper. But Prosecutors allege that the hobo street gang was formed no later than 2004 by a number of men who, though representing different gangs, all grew up in the same Chicago housing project, differentiating themselves by throwing up the hobo horns. Once selected, Members who joined the hobos would ceremoniously have the gang's name tattooed on them alongside their slogans, hobo or nothing, hobo for life, and the earth is our turf. Gregory Chester, aka Bowlegs, aka Pops, will operate as the de facto leader of the hobo street gang. Growing up in the Robert Taylor housing projects on the south side of Chicago, Chester would suffer the nickname Bowlegs due to him being born with severe birth defects. Prosecutors would eventually allege that Chester, Arnold Council, aka Armstrong, and Paris Poe, aka Poe, formed this gang of all-stars in order to corner the lucrative drug markets on the south and west sides of the city. Gregory Chester would later admit in court that he was the main drug supplier for the gang. Chester was known in the streets for having a large supply of both heroin and marijuana. The government alleges that the Hobo Street Gang used their enforcers to consolidate the city's most lucrative drug markets, effectively taking those spots from the hands of rival gangs. Stacey and Kathy, the Hobo's Street Gang was described by prosecutors as a super gang, a sort of all-star team of criminals born out of the Robert Taylor homes that terrorized the south and west sides of the city for a decade, starting in the mid-2000s. Beginning in or around 2006, the hobos were alleged to have committed a number of murders and robberies in the furtherance of their profitable drug operation. By this point, the hobos had positioned themselves as the top of the food chain. The earth was truly their turf, and even gang leaders from rival sets had to pay tax and answer to them. On January 19th, 2006, a man by the name of Wilbur Moore was shot and killed outside the Southside Barbershop. The feds alleged that Moore was shot and killed by Poe and Council because he cooperated with a grand jury, causing one of the hobo's residences to be raided. This, however, would not be the last time the government would allege the hobos committed murder against one of their informants. 
and researching this story, man, um, like I said, there were a number of informants, um, both people that eventually testified, as well as, you know, people that the hobos allegedly eliminated so that they couldn't testify, man. There was like a, a, a crazy amount of informants in this case. Um, and even like we're going to get to later in the story, man, one of the hobos themselves, man, ended up, you know, saying turn a snitch. So it's funny that, you know, the hobos, man, they really hated informants. They really hated snitches. And it would kind of serve as like foreshadowing because when they would eventually be taken down by the federal government, the federal government heavily utilized snitches, man. Leaders of the hobos were also alleged by the government to have monitored police radio frequencies to get a leg up on law enforcement communications, as well as performing their own stakeouts of prospective robbery victims or enemies, calling it doing their homework. Hobo members Paris Poe, Gabrielle Bush, aka Louie, and Byron Brown, aka B Rupts, would eventually be charged with over six murders and multiple attempted murders many being carried out with precision and planning, leading prosecutors to make note of it, referencing it many times during trial. In 2013, drug dealer Keith Daniels was secretly cooperating against leaders of the hobo street gang when he gave chilling testimony to a federal grand jury describing one of the gang members disdain for police informants. Paris Poe would be present with Daniels when they had learned about the killing of another person who had been cooperating with law enforcement. According to court filings, Poe's reaction was laughter, Daniels told the jury. Just weeks after that testimony, federal prosecutors alleged Paris Poe, dressed in all black, waited behind bushes and fatally shot Daniels in front of his fiance and two young children as they pulled into the parking lot of their South Suburban apartment complex. On September 26, 2013, nine members of the Hobo Street Gang were indicted on federal racketeering charges as well as a string of murders and robberies. The five count indictment returned by a federal grand jury alleges five murders, solicitation of a sixth murder, four attempted murders, three robberies, and the operation of drug spots and drug lines on the city's south side. In their 2013 federal indictment, prosecutors claimed the hobos were a renegade collection of gangster disciples and black disciples. In addition to the nine murders, Federal prosecutors claim the gang also robbed former NBA player Bobby Simmons at gunpoint outside of a nightclub in 2006. In late 2016, the trial for the Hobo Street Gang would begin. Allegedly armed with a mountain of evidence and wiretap phone conversations, the government seemed to rely on star witnesses like Cashel Williams, a member of the Fifth War faction of the Black Disciples. At trial, Williams testified that the 5th Ward and Newtown BDs were in conflict with the hobos back in September of 2007. Williams was also going to testify that around that time, he attended a funeral with two of his fellow friends. When they were victims of a drive-by shooting, killing both men, Williams later identified hobos member William Ford, aka Joe Buck, as a person he seen drive by soon after the shooting. This dude, Cashel Williams, is actually like a, a, a character that uh, somebody had reached out to me, sent me some information on him. And upon doing research, man, like it was pretty clear, man, the dude Cashel Williams uh, snitched on the hobos. Um, like I said, man, in part two, I, I want to dive a little deeper into the dude Cashel because it's a lot of information about him. You know, he was one of the Newtown BDs, which basically became O Block. So he is really one of the founding members of the whole O Block, Newtown BD, that whole situation, man. He one of them guys. So it was kind of crazy that, you know, people sent me paperwork with his name on it. And he was one of the guys, like I said, that, um, that snitched on the uh, on the hobos. There's another guy we're gonna get to later. Uh, one of the indicted men ended up, you know, cooperating with the government. So, so you know, we're, we'll probably dive a little bit deeper into his story as well. But man, we just gonna let y'all know, man. If y'all rocking with the story, man, stay tuned for part two. We gonna dig a little deeper into this dude, Cashel Williams, man, as well as some other informants. During the trial, the jury also heard damning evidence about the gang's cooperative drug sales. The hobos controlled a number of street drug brands that, although varied, were packed and managed by the same individuals. 
During the trial, the government alleged that Bush ran the X-Men and cash money drug lines and counsel ran the Pink Panther line. It would also be shown in court that the gun used during that funeral shooting was also used to kill. On January 4th, 2017, six members of the Hobo Street Gang would be found guilty of murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and racketeering. Jurors found the six men, including Hobo's leader Gregory Bowlegs Chester, Paris Poe, Arnold Armstrong Counsel, Gabrielle Louis Bush, William Joe Buck Ford, and Derek D. Block Vaughn guilty of racketeering, conspiracy, and five murders. In the end, Gregory will be sentenced to 40 years behind bars. Other top lieutenants and hitmen such as Paris Poe, William Ford, Derek Vaughn, and Byron Brown will be sentenced to life in prison. Of the nine men originally indicted, 10 would eventually plead guilty or be found guilty at trial, with only one, Rodney Jones, aka Milk, avoiding decades behind bars due to his eventual cooperation with the United States government. Yo, it's your boy MXL Guapo, man. Street Certified News, the most reputable source for urban media, man. We really appreciate y'all rocking with us, man. Like I said, man, smack that like button, smack that uh, subscribe, man. Drop a comment. Let us know if you want us to drop this 20K vlog, man. We really just want to celebrate with y'all, man. The channel is, is going up, man, and we really appreciate it. Like I said, man, it's your boy MXL Guapo, man. Street Certified News, we out.